Hello everyone, this is Mark Lynn with Healthcare Business Specialist in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and this is going to be a quick tutorial on the information that you need to gather or compile to help us or whoever you're working with uh, enter this information in the Provider Relief Funds portal, which is due by September the 30th, 2021. What we're going to be reporting on are funds received from the period 4-10-2020 through 6-30-2020 and you had to have spent those funds by June 30, 2021. This is a 16-page document that we are going to use to uh, compile that information, and you can use this to compile your information. Uh, here's just some, some basics about what you need to do. First thing is we have a one-hour recorded session uh, in YouTube. If you want to watch that, that's going to be very helpful. It's a great place to start. And in the slide presentation, you can find right here um, as well. Uh, there is worksheets that HHS has provided for us. It's an Excel spreadsheet, and that's really going to be the key to making this work. This, this document that we have here, I've basically screenshotted lots of those, of those tables that they're going to use, and this is just designed to help you to understand what you're going to need to put in to these tables. And then when you fill out this Excel spreadsheet in these tables, then you can enter that information into the portal when it's time. You want to, this is the place where you want to start is putting these worksheets together. Once you get ready to enter, input your information into the portal, you're gonna have to have a user, a, a username that's gonna be an email address. And of course it'll have a portal password and there will be uh, two factor authentication of the, uh, of that, so they'll send you an email and you want to put in a code uh, for that. So if we are doing it for you and there's, we're not doing it for a whole lot of people, um, but uh, if you are, uh, if you, if we are doing it for you, then make sure we have your cell phone so we can, we can text you that we need this code. First thing you're gonna have to do is figure up, look through all your bank accounts and see all the money uh, that you've received. Of course, we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at this second quarter, I guess 2020, that's where most of your funds uh, came in. So you want to, you want to, this is where you're going to be putting that information. Uh, they are asking for information for all six quarters here, but, but the uses of these funds are really for this period of, uh, period of time here, the second quarter, April 10th through June 30th, the second quarter, 2020. That's what they're going to be testing uh, you on. Um, and so uh, this first line here, this COVID-19 to $49,241. This is supposed to pre-populate. I haven't seen it doing it on the ones that we've worked on so far. We've not worked on a lot so far, uh, but that 49,000 should be going in there. Your uh, SBA grant or SBA loan that you got there, the PPP loan, you'll have to put that in there. If you got that FEMA, a lot of people got a FEMA $10,000 uh, thing. Some, so I think some got 3,000, some got 10,000. So you'll want to make sure you put that in there. Make sure you put it in the right quarter uh, as well. And then if we're doing it for you, provide us with documentation. We do have to have documentation of everything that you put in. Most of it we don't have to submit to HHS, but we have to hold on to it for three years at least. And so the second item here is provider relief expenses. Most of your, most of our, pay, uh, most of our clients will have less than five hundred thousand dollars of receipts of, from provider relief funds, and you will not have to break it down in these categories. You basically have to put in two numbers. One is your general administrative expenses, and your health care related expenses. Most of your sal most of your expenses are going to be salaries. And we need some type of documentation of how you've accounted for those salaries. There's all sorts of rules related to that. You can't you, you can't double dip. You can't have somebody uh, claim you, you can be claiming more than 100 percent of somebody's salaries through the different grant funds that are out there. Um, so what you're going to do is probably have a percentage of time and then figure out what percentage of time is related to these COVID activities and put together a worksheet that we've came up with here. So if you want to uh, click in here, you can find our little worksheet that we've got for you and that should work uh, just fine or whatever you have to document that. Again, keep your documentation uh, for that. 
put those expenses in here, I break this down between general administrative and healthcare related expenses. And uh, that's really, and, and we have six quarters here that we're reporting on at this time. If you did get more than half a million dollars in funds, then you will have to break it down by these categories. Um, the next item is when we go into what's called lost, uh, lost revenues. Uh, the first thing they want you to do is compare your net patient revenues in 2019 to 2020. What we basically need is a profit and loss statement from you, or if you've got a tax, tax returns for both years, typically that will show us what we need to know as far as your net patient uh, collections. If, that, if those monies do have monies in there that aren't from, from patient collections, then let us know and we need to pull that information uh, out. And then here is the form uh, that if you do have, if your expenses completely use up all your provider relief funds, you do not have to do this particular this particular form. Uh, this is computing your lost revenues, and it's by payer mix. So it, this will be this one will probably take the most time. Is going by quarter by quarter, figuring up what your net patient collections were for by quarter there there's 10 quarters there that you have to do that for that is going to take some time so so if again if you use up if all of your, if your expenses use up all the provider relief funds you don't even get an option to enter this information in there so i would focus on expenses first and if you can do that that would save you a lot of time in doing that and then metrics they have all these metrics that you need in there this is not going to and, and this is not going to affect your settlement with them or your reporting. It's just information only. So take it, take it what for what that's worth. But for rural health clinics, there's really only two metrics that you're going to have to do. These payroll metrics here about full-time employees, part-time employees, contracted, furloughed, separated, and hired. Thankfully, most of the RHCs we have are very, very small, and there's not a whole lot of turnover. So this shouldn't be that hard. Again, you got 10 quarters of information. I would go through and look at your 941 report, or sometimes your state unemployment reports basically has a listing of, of your number of employees there. Um, HHS considers a full-time employee 30 hours or more. So if you have employees that are 30 hours or more, that's what you're gonna want to enter there. And for our rural health clinics here, um, there's some metrics on patient metrics, outpatient visits. That is going to be the one metric that you're going to have to have. And fortunately, rural health clinics do have pretty good information on visits because we have to fill out that cost report. So, so by quarter, if you can put down your face-to-face -face visits that you would count on the cost report, that's what we would need for that particular one. Here's the definitions that you need on these personnel metrics there. I think there's where we got the 30 hours of service per week is full time. Unfortunately, they, they, this looks like something I would do here. And then they said that part time is one to 34 hours a week, which doesn't really work. So, uh, so we're just gonna use 30 and hopefully they'll fix that in the future. And then finally, you have a survey that you have to do on whether this is gonna help you. Well, sure, yeah, you gave me 103,000 bucks, Absolutely, thank you very much. We wouldn't be around if it wasn't for that. But go through and if, if your answers are different than what we've put on there, then let us know and then do write something about how this has affected you because there's an optional place there for at least a thousand characters where you can write the impact of these COVID-19 grant funds, which have been uh, really, really just a, a beneficial to our rural health clinics. This, is, this piece here is we're putting together a documentation package and you should put together a documentation package and hang on to it. You don't have to send it in like your cost report. You know, we have to send those in. This piece, the documentation, we don't, you do not have to send it in. Uh, but what we do is we just put some tabs where you can put your information together and sort of organize it. And I would scan it once you get it finished and then put it in a very safe place, we'll put it in Dropbox. We have a system called Canopy that we're gonna put it in and we're gonna hang on to it. So those are your documentation of, of stuff. This will take some time. This report is due by September the 30th and there's no extensions on it. And we and they say, if you don't fill it out, that there's a chance that they will take this money back from you. You do not wanna be given um, HHS back that 103,000 that you got and those other provider relief funds that you received. So 
watch the video that we have. It's a one hour video on how to do the reporting and then try to accumulate this information and then get it to the person that was that's gonna help you uh, put this information into the system. Again, if we're helping you uh, get it to us as soon as possible, uh, again, we don't really, we're trying not to do it as much as possible because we still have a ton of cost reports that we have to get done uh, and those are late at this point. So, so thank you very much and we appreciate you guys very much and uh, uh, stay safe, it's getting crazy.